Hi guys, welcome to the archive. My name is Matt and this week I'm going to show you guys how I made these modular overgrown effects that you can add to almost any terrain. If you're new to the channel, these are based on my modular accessory slot system, but you can easily adapt this system to be used in almost any terrain, not just my magnetic tiles like these here. But I will leave a link up there just in case you guys want to check out these tiles and how they work. The short version is these accessories all have cocktail sticks that are slotted into the gaps in the foam. You push in a little slot using another cocktail stick and it's good to go. It's flexible as hell and can be used for a ton of modular additions. I've shown quite a few in a lot of my other videos. I wanted to use this system to counter one of my pet peeves with modular terrain. Whether you're using modular terrain to represent different and interesting battlefields for wargaming or the insane variety of locations that you might need to represent in an RPG, we often find that we make sacrifices in modular terrain so that it will work in multiple environments and not seem too out of place. The downside to this is I often find that we hold back on layers of detail that we might otherwise add to a building. For example, if you need a piece of stone terrain to be able to represent a overgrown building as well as a shining cathedral then if you add moss and overgrown effects like this to those tiles they're going to very heavily lean down one side of that scale and they're going to look a bit weird when you try and use them as a cathedral and that's where these come in having all the vegetation as modular accessories lets you change the tone of a building completely with very little effort you can go from well-maintained clean stonework with no vegetation to a cosy, delightful, friendly village with artfully maintained flowers and moss in the walls. And then on again to a run-down, overgrown ruin covered in naturally sprouting weeds and grass. Or even a dead shell, the vegetation corrupted and killed by the necromantic energies released nearby and the inside crawling with ghouls. Also, these pieces are equally useful on archive wood tiles because of the way I've designed them. They slot right in on top of the horizontal planks, so there's no gap with the wall. They're also totally compatible with the stair tiles from the wall and temple system, which again should be linked at the top and in the description. This means you can have this modular vegetation showing an overgrown temple. or even ruined settlement walls with grass sprouting from every crack. Again, there's a lot of flexibility here depending on what vegetation you add. Flowers and grass give an abandoned but friendly outlook. Dead grass, again, leans more towards something nasty lives here now and can give a grim overtone to nearly any build. It's not just exteriors these can be used on either. Obviously they can be used on the insides of walls in ruined buildings, but they can also be used in dungeons to make rooms and corridors more than just lines of stone. Using dead grass and moss reinforces the dark and gloomy atmosphere. But then using brighter vegetation or even flowers could be interesting for a Feywild dungeon, or a dungeon representing a ruin close to the surface. You can even use them in slots right at floor level to show vegetation sprouting from the floor in corners. This is the kind of thing you see all the time in games like Skyrim, stone dungeons overgrown with plant life that add colour and break up the monotony. I've got plans for loads of more plant options here in future for different effects, but the pieces in this video alone give a ton of options to get started with. Finally, these pieces are compatible with other modular tile systems that I have planned, some of which should be coming very soon, but you'll see what I mean when I release those. If you think these ideas are cool and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the bell to make sure you see my videos in future. The first pieces I made were the grass tuft mounts. To get started, I grabbed some scrap foam, cut up some half inch cocktail stick pieces with one end tapered off and the other end cut at a 45 degree angle. I punched holes in the scrap foam and pushed the sticks in with just a small bit poking out. To make the main body of the mount, I mixed up some milliput and left it out for about half an hour or so until it wasn't as sticky. Once it was easier to work with, I made quarter inch balls and squashed them onto the exposed bits of cocktail stick, making a shape that was basically a mostly flat oval. Now you can try and keep the bottom of the oval as close to the cocktail stick as possible, or you can just trim it down afterwards with a knife. This basically means it's more able to fit on wood walls right the way up to the wall. If there's nothing sticking out to the bottom, there's nothing to get caught on the horizontal wood plank. 
Then I textured the milliput as compacted dirt and roots with some tin foil. I wanted this texture as rough as possible so it didn't get filled in by paint. I painted them in raw umber with a raw umber and tan mixed dry brush just in case any show was past the tuft and sealed them in with some matte Mod Podge which isn't very matte at times really so I threw on some AK Ultra Matte Varnish over that to dull the shine properly which only goes to make it tougher so no harm done. You can get a better result with this by waiting until each layer is properly dry but I needed to get the video finished so I rushed it a little bit. Probably shouldn't have, but hey, got to get those videos out on time for you guys. It's also worth giving the cocktail sticks a little tug at this point, and if they haven't cured in properly, just super glue them back in place. I also made a range of longer versions, some 2 inches long, some 3 inches long, and some in less straight patches using the exact same techniques, but with two cocktail sticks and a bit more milliput. Now I put the cocktail sticks in two inches apart in some places, but I'd recommend them being one inch apart on pieces up to three inches wide and three inches apart on pieces larger than that, so that you can slot them in not only into modular walls, but also the wall and temple system that I've shown in the past. I kind of had to go back and fix this later with a drill because I didn't think that little bit through. Once I had all these little putty nubbins all cured and painted, I picked a selection of adhesive grass tufts, flower tufts and bush tufts to stick to them. This is what makes this craft so quick and easy. These things are really quite cheap to buy and mean you can pretty much get as many of them as you need in a matter of minutes, once the putty cures at least. I tried a few different methods of securing them. The sticky backs that come with them work quite well in most cases. If you find you need more glue, gel super glue works reasonably well, but it takes a bit too long to dry and is a bit too prone to sticking to fingers. For the same reason, I'd avoid liquid super glue. I found putting a blob of hot glue on before actually attaching it really helped to secure it and make it one solid piece, but it does cool down quite quickly, so you do have to move quite fast. I used a range of tufts here, partially to experiment and partially to give you guys an idea of what different stuff might look like. All these bushes and tufts are from Warpainter Scenics, but there are tons of this sort of thing that you can pick up online or from model shops from varying different suppliers. I really like the flowers, grass tufts, and the lighter green bushes. The other bushes I thought didn't look quite right, they didn't quite blend with the grass that they were based on, so I didn't make any more of those. Then there was the second piece that I decided to make for this, the hanging moss. To get started with it, I made some more putty dirt clods, this time 3 inches long and some 6 inches long. I even made one curve and angle up an inch to see if I could get that to work. Like I said before, on these larger pieces I'd suggest putting the cocktail sticks 3 inches apart, which makes them easier to use with the wall and temple system. I wanted an organic looking material to flock over, the idea being that if any showed through it would look like mossy roots rather than, well, obvious cardboard, cheesecloth or whatever else I could use. To do this I cut some strips of jute twine, exactly the same stuff as I used in the stable video for the thatch roof. I used different lengths for the different putty strips that I was going to attach them to. I basically cut the twine to about an inch longer than I needed for each one, so 4 inches of twine for the 3 inch putty strips, and so on. Once I had the thing glued together, I just trimmed off any excess. I then cut some 3 inch strings and split them off, unthreading the main strings and untwisting those a bit before putting them all back together a little bit straighter. This doesn't have to be perfect, it basically just hides that very obvious spiral pattern on the twine that kind of shows it as obvious string. It might work for jungle vines, but it looks a little bit weird for moss roots. It also helps them all blend together into a flat surface that we can work on later. Once I had plenty of pieces like that, I laid them out flat as long as I needed for the piece and carefully hot glued the long twine piece down the middle before adding more hot glue to the other side of the twine and bending the loose twine around it. To finish this off, I bent them around the longer twine so I had about an inch and a half dangling on each side like drooping moss. To keep it stuck down, I added a little bit more hot glue a bit at a time and folded it over, being careful not to get any hot glue on my fingers. You might have some stray patches at this point, but that's easily fixed with a thin layer of Mod Podge or PVA over the whole thing. The reason I used the hot glue first was to be sure everything would hold in place. 
PVA doesn't exactly dry quickly, and you want it to hang down nice and straight, like, you know, gravity actually exists. To make sure that any of this that shows through looks like dark mossy roots, I coated the whole thing in some thinned down raw umber brown acrylic paint. I also painted the milliput wall mounts in black and then raw umber at this stage, just in case any showed through slightly. Once it dried, I attached it to the now cured putty strip with some more hot glue. The great thing about this is even if the milliput happens to snap at some point in the future, the twine and hot glue won't, and it'll hold everything perfectly in place while you super glue it back together. The final step was adding the actual moss. I used Luke's 2-in-1 light green foam flock from geekgaming.com to add colour and texture. You could go with the mid green if you preferred that colour, but I'm planning on adding some different modular vegetation in that colour, so I stuck to the light green to keep it varied. Most of the time we actually want this stuff fully mixed up, but for this purpose I used a sieve to separate out the clumpier flock from the fine flock. Both have their own uses and most of the time they look great together, but for the moss, I only wanted the clump flock. I can highly recommend using this stuff over other flocks. As you can see, it's got a huge variety of textures, densities, and sizes of flock. Not to mention some awesome subtle variations of colour that mean you really don't have to mix it with other flocks to avoid a monotone look. It looks absolutely great straight out of the bag. As I've said before, I'm not being sponsored or paid anything for this, or even given free flock for that matter. Alternatively, you can try and put together a mix of flocks, but that would take a fair bit of effort to reach even a similar effect. Anyway, to get it glued down, I coated the sections that I wanted to have covered in a coat of PVA glue with a brush. I prefer brushing on a solid layer of glue for the first layer, because it means I'll get a stronger hold and because there's no flock underneath it, so using a brush is, well, possible. This is also why I leave a bit of excess twine attached at the top until the end. It makes it much easier to hold. Once it dried at the end, I trimmed those off and painted them with that raw umber to blend in with the roots. Anyway, once I had my flock where I wanted it, I used a cheap spray bottle like this to seal it in. These usually come with a little filter on the end of the tube, which you'll want to either pull off if you can or cut it off if you can't. I mixed up some PVA glue and acrylic matte medium in a 50-50 mix and thinned it down about 10 to 1 with water. Before I sprayed that on though, I used a different spray bottle with isopropanol in it to soak the piece first. This might sound weird, but basically the isopropanol soaks in easier without dislodging the flock and allows the sealing PVA to soak in deeply too. It basically breaks the surface tension that makes the glue mix bead up on the surface. Now, for a non-modular piece, that would pretty much be enough, but I wanted this to stand up to a bit of handling, so I went back afterwards and did the same thing, but used half as much water in the mixture and applied it using pipettes. You could just give it some extra coats of spray, but now it was sealed in place nicely, using pipettes allowed me to add less water to the mix, which I felt let me make it more secure in less coats. Now this has made it plenty tough for my level of handling, by which I mean being careful when holding it and placing it, same as I would with a mini that has a thin plastic spear. The flock at this point is touch safe, but not scrub safe. It'll come off if you rub it side to side. If you wanted your piece to be more resilient, you can absolutely do that, but the more you do, the more it affects the visuals from this point. As you can see, it makes it more wet looking and a little bit darker, which luckily kind of works for most to some degree. If you look at the right hand side of the piece, you can see where I tried to dull it down again with some matte varnish, which worked pretty well if you want a matte finish, but it's still visually more clumped and solid than the touch safe version. Toughness wise, it'll now stand up to some light to medium scraping slash Cheeto fingered mishandling, but I still wouldn't scrub the thing particularly hard. This piece was a bit of an experiment for the benefit of you guys. I'd be happy with touch safe, but I figured I'd try and help as many people as possible. To add this final layer of resilience, I mixed matte medium, water, and matte Mod Podge, because I'd run out of PVA, in an equal mix. This should be barely classifiable as a liquid. You want it runnier than Mod Podge, but only just. I then applied it using the same pipette method as before, including the isopropanol, before making sure it went on thick. Whichever finish you choose, they add plenty of resilience to the piece, and though I'd still recommend being careful, it's easily tough enough to slot in and take out pieces over and over and over again. 
If you want to know more about spraying things through a cheap spray bottle like this, Luke does a great video on sealing flock that I will link in the description. One last quick trick for getting these pieces to slot in smoothly and nicely. If you use a knife to trim or scrape any paint or glue that got on the cocktail stick while painting and sealing, this helps avoid any stickiness and helps make them slot in and remove a lot more smoothly. I really like how these turned out and I think they're a pretty solid framework for adding more modular vegetation in the future. If you like the video, let me know in the comments below. It'll let me know that you like this kind of content and you want to see more of it. And it'll also help the video, which, you know, is always nice. I want to take a second to say thank you to those of you who have already supported the channel on Patreon. You guys are incredibly generous and really supportive of the crafting community. It's only your generous support that enables small channels like me to be able to continue to afford putting out content like this. YouTube ad income is pretty much naff all to small channels. But naff all or not, we're still shelling out money on materials, filming equipment and all the rest of it, so your support is really appreciated. If you want to support the channel like this and you haven't already, I've got some thank yous prepared for you guys, like printable things that you can just print off on your printer at home and add to your craft, saving you a ton of time, as well as early access to every single one of these videos before they release. As always, thank you to anyone who takes a second to share this video or any of my videos with friends, groups, any of that kind of thing. Anything that gets these videos to more people is so appreciated by me. Finally, if you need any tools or supplies for your builds, there is a link in the description to my equipment list where I link to practically everything that I use, where to get it, and if the link is an Amazon link and you buy it through that, a small amount from Amazon will come to the channel, no extra cost to you. It's not a lot, but it's a little bit that helps the channel keep going. Thank you guys for watching. I'll be back next week with more ideas and terrain. Until next time, I'll be in the archive.